Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. In today's DIY video, we are making five different lights using Dollar Tree push lights or puck lights, whatever you want to call them. These lights range from boho to modern and everything in between using almost all Dollar Tree supplies. They are functional and decorative, plus they cost a dollar. I mean, you can't beat that. And you're going to love it, so stick around. So let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, for DIY number one, we are using this wood plank that come in a pack of six from Dollar Tree, some tumbling tower blocks also from Dollar Tree, one push light or puck light also from Dollar Tree, plus I wasn't sure if I was going to use this jute twine that you can find at Dollar Tree or this raffia that I got on Amazon for another project. You can find some kinds of raffia at Dollar Tree usually, but I had this one on hand, so that's the one I'm using. I will link the raffia and any other supplies that I use in the description box below. I place two blocks at the top of my plank and I mark on the second block with a pencil so that I can trim that block a little bit shorter. I use my miter shears to cut that piece of the block off. Then I place blocks on the sides of the plank. There are four blocks on each side and they are slightly longer than the plank itself. Then I place two more blocks to close off the bottom and I'm gonna mark and trim that second bottom block the same as I did on the top two blocks. I want to set up all my blocks before I begin to glue. I start gluing the blocks together using tight bond wood glue, and I'll link that for you below. I glue the blocks end to end and standing on their sides. I also want to glue the top and the sides of this plank to the bottom edge of all of those blocks so that everything is attached. We are basically making a wooded rectangle that is framed with Django blocks. Then I repeat the rectangle frame in Django blocks minus the wood plank. So the framed plank is the bottom or the back of our light and this second rectangle frame is going to be the front of our light. So we make this second one the same size as the first one and I glue all the side pieces together before assembling the rectangle. And before I glue all the pieces of the rectangle together, I'm going to glue two blocks on each corner of the bottom rectangle. Those are gonna be the sides of our light. I did glue two blocks attached end to end on each corner as you're seeing here, but in the end, I remove one of the two blocks on all of those corners so that my light would be less wide. So in the end, it's only gonna be a block in width back to front. I take all the assembled sides of my rectangle and I glue them all together and I set everything aside to fully dry for several hours. Off camera, I had removed one of the blocks off of each corner to make the light less wide. And at this point, I glue the front rectangle onto all of the four corners and then I set this whole thing aside to dry. I'm using Verathane wood stain in the color Early American. I'll link it for you below. And I use a baby wipe and stain the entire piece. That's the front, the back, inside, outside, and all around. Then I wipe off the excess with a dry paper towel. I then went over the entire thing a second time with more stain because I decided I wanted the color to look a little bit deeper. Then I put the whole thing aside to fully dry. I wanted to do a little distressing on this piece, so I grabbed my folk art acrylic paint in the color Camel, and I mixed that with some Apple Barrel Matte White, and I'm using a dry brush. I roughly brushed the beige kind of color onto the edges and the grooves of the project, paying attention to the corners, trying to make it look like it's naturally distressed and just basically worn out a bit. I'm looking at the jute twine as compared to the raffia that I already had, and I felt like the jute was just too similar in color to the project itself, and I wanted more contrast. So I ended up using the raffia, and since the push light is going to be attached to the wood plank, somewhere between the middle and the top of this light, I want my raffia to span across that space so that it is covering the push light when you're standing in front of it. So I mark with a small pencil mark, 
where to start and where to end the wrapped raffia. And I begin wrapping it around my rectangle. I used a dab of Dollar Tree super glue to hold the first piece of raffia down in the back of the light. The final step to finish this light is to attach the push light itself. And as I said before, it will be attached to the wood plank inside of the rectangle. And I'm going to use these Velcro squares that I got at Dollar Tree to attach this light so that it's removable in the future when I need to change the batteries. And this is how DIY number one turned out. I think this light is so unique. It is definitely on the boho side of style, I think in my opinion. And I think it makes a beautiful decorative light for a side table or a shelf or a cabinet like I have it in here. I feel like the video can't really do it justice with the glare coming off from the light, but in person, this is really, really nice looking and for sure a statement piece. You may be able to call this rustic, maybe, possibly, but to me, I'm feeling boho vibes all the way. But I wanna know what you think. Boho or no? Oh, that rhymes. No, but seriously, let me know in the comments if you are feeling this boho light. Moving on to DIY number two. This is one of the easier, simpler lights. We are using Dollar Tree wood planks and the box bottom to one of these small wood boxes that have the animals kind of, I guess, wood burned onto the top, also from Dollar Tree, but we are only using the bottom of the box, which is blank. And obviously we are also using Dollar Tree push or puck lights. Using my tight bond wood glue, I glue the top of my plank on an angle, like I'm showing you here. It's, I glue it on an angle inside of the box. And then I do the same thing with a second plank on the other side of the box, and we wait for that glue to dry. I measure the width I need for the bottom of my lamp sides, and I used my miter shears to cut through one of the planks to make it the perfect fit between both of those sides. Then I glue that onto both of the sides. I take out my Waverly Antique Wax and I give the lamp a generous coat of color. I paint the outside and the inside, basically I'm painting everywhere. And I went over any of the spots that I felt needed extra coverage. So at that point, I let the whole thing fully dry. At this point, all that's left to do is to take my Velcro squares and attach the push light to the very top of the wood box inside. And this light is complete. And this is how DIY number two, my Dollar Tree desk lamp turned out. This is a very basic light, I know, but if you needed a battery operated light in a room but wanted it to look nice, this desk lamp could totally work. It is a touch modern looking in my opinion, and although it's hardly the brightest lamp ever, I mean, I wouldn't try to read and sign any serious documents using only this light, if you know what I mean, but as a functional extra light on a desk or a table, it works. It's attract attractive and it's best of all about $2 to make. That works for me, but I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on our simple and easy Dollar Tree desk lamp. Yeah. DIY number three was truly unplanned and just sort of came to me while working on the other projects, but I am glad that it did. I used this Dollar Tree round tube-like gift box that was left over from the holidays, and I took it outside and spray painted it, first with Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the color Fossil, which is a beigey color, and then when that dried, I sprayed it with Rust-Oleum stone textured spray paint in the color Bleached Stone. I will link them for you both below. I sprayed both the top and the bottom of the box, and I also removed the inside lip that's inside the box top as well. I cut up some brushed metal color contact paper that I had on hand and I used that to line the inside of the box top because I didn't want to see that red color that was still there and for this project the box top is actually going to be the lamp bottom so I did my best to cover that with the silver colored paper. Next I grabbed this nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I decided to wrap the top and the bottom of the box with a couple of rows of rope. It was a three on the top, I think, and two on the bottom, and I attached the rope with some hot glue. 
Once I was done wrapping, I decided I wanted to cover the whole top of the lamp, which remember is really the bottom of our box. So I spiral wrapped the top with the remaining rope that I had left over and I secured it with hot glue whenever it was needed. Then I used one of the cutting mats from the Dollar Tree kitchen section. They come in a pack of two and I used one of them. I measured it by rolling it around the box and cutting off the excess mat that I didn't need. Then I rolled it into a tube shape and used some hot glue to secure the edges together so that it would stay in that tube shape. With my push light sitting at the bottom of my lamp in what used to be the box top, I fit the cutting mat into the box top and then I fit the box bottom, which is now my lamp top. I fit the box over the cutting mat. So no glue is needed because the box is resting on the top of the cutting mat. And this is how DIY number three turned out. Okay, I'm not even sure what kind of lamp I would call this, but it was really a surprise project to me and I was surprised how much I like it. I think it's truly unique and I enjoy looking at it. I think it would be gorgeous on an entryway table or wall shelf in a living room. And again, I wish it were easier to film this light without the glare so that you could see the full look and the beautiful neutral colors and the textures that it has. This is definitely neutral, but there is something about it that says nautical to me. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's shaped like a lighthouse. I don't know, but I feel like it has marina vibes. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments what type of lamp you would call this and if it's just me or does it give you nautical marina type vibes too. Moving on to DIY number four, which is super, super simple and quick. We are using one of these small wood circle frames from Dollar Tree and the top of one of the small paper mache boxes also from Dollar Tree. And of course, a push light. Now I did run out of Dollar Tree push lights and I had to use this push light that I got at Amazon. I will link it below. It comes in a set of five and it's exactly the same size and look, but I did pay more on Amazon. So if you can find them at Dollar Tree, they are a better deal there. I'm going to paint everything with this Apple Barrel Gloss Black Acrylic Paint. I'm also going to paint the push light itself. So I taped the light part off and I'm going to be painting that white part that surrounds the light in the middle. I pulled the label off the bottom of the wood frame and I removed the little tabs from the frame with pliers and that was to prepare everything for painting. I paint everything, the frame, the box top, and the light inside and out with the black gloss paint and only one coat was needed for full coverage and then I waited for all of the pieces to dry. Once dry, I needed to prop up the light inside the box top so that it would reach the frame correctly. First, I tried using a Jenga block but that was a little too tall so I settled on a piece of this paint stir stick which I glued to the middle of the inside of the box top with Dollar Tree Super Glue Gel. And then I add a few drops of the super glue to the back of the frame and centered the front of the light so that the light part was coming out of the circle and allowed that to dry just a bit. The last thing to do was to attach the Velcro square to the back of the push light and then the other side to the paint stir stick. That's to keep the box top attached and covering the back of the push light. And this is how DIY number four, my Dollar Tree Spotlight, turned out. Now I'm calling this a spotlight because really it's only useful for highlighting a piece of art or a decor item with light. Since the light comes out directly toward you, I am not sure you could use this for much else. I mean, unless you're interrogating someone or something like that. But other than that, I think it's a sleek, modern looking spotlight that would look great in a living room displaying the items that you want to emphasize. I think it's totally functional and useful while being attractive as well. It's beyond easy and quick to make, but I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments if you would use this spotlight in your home. DIY number five is our final DIY and it is also a very simple one. Using this plastic domed cloche from Dollar Tree, 
some Mod Podge and this crushed glass that I got on Amazon for another project. I'll link it below. It's crushed mirror glass, but you could easily do this with glitter or something else that was shiny. I remove the label and the bottom, which I will be painting later, and then clean it with some glass cleaner and a paper towel. Then all we are doing is painting the inside of the dome with Mod Podge and then sprinkling our crushed glass inside and spinning the dome to try and cover the Mod Podge with the glass. I empty the extra pieces back into the glass container and add some more Mod Podge and glass into any of the bare spots that I see. And then I put that aside for several hours to fully dry in order for all that Mod Podge to dry and be clear. I take the bottom outside and spray paint it with Rust-Oleum Metallic Gold. And when it's dry, I place my push light onto the bottom and the dome on top of that. And this is how DIY number five turned out. I think this sparkly light is super cute. It has a little bit of this glittery snow globe thing going on, but I think it's lovely. I'd say you could use this in a child's room, but only if you were using child safe filler in the dome, not with the crushed glass, obviously, but I think it's really cute. It would make a really cute night light or even to keep a small light on in a bathroom or something like that. It's sweet and it's beyond easy to make. And these are all five of my Dollar Tree push or puck light lamps. All of them pretty different, but also very easy to make. Some are super quick and all of them cost just a couple of dollars. Useful lights with serious decor appeal. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and which one you'd like to try making. And also let me know if you call it a push light or a puck light, or maybe even something else. I am dying to know your answers. I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY, and if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.